Hi, and today in the shed we've got something else different. This time it is a Black & Decker drill-powered lathe. Well, the lathe attachment on the drill itself, which is an amazing thing. It's actually got a two-prong drive centre mounted in there already. This drill, I think, actually works. So let's quickly plug it in and find out. Oops, sorry about that. Quick change of the light there. <laughs> I forgot I had the light bulb plugged into that. Okay, let's see if it works. Ta-da! Yes, it does. Well, I'm delighted with that. Gosh, really old stuff. Even the plug on here is old. Let's see if I can get the plug in the camera there. Look at that. That's going to have to get a clean-up. Everything here is going to have to get a clean-up. But look at the size and the quality of that old plug. I believe it's had a new wire fitted, um, just because some other examples of this same drill that I looked at online I have a very different wire coming out of here. But this seems right, you know, and uh, it didn't give me an electric shock just there, so I think I'm quite pleased about that. Let's just have some light on again. That's more like it. <laughs> right, so this is another lucky auction find. I picked it up for... Oh, Maybe five pounds this time, I don't know, maybe two pounds, I can't remember. Now last night I sprayed a load of penetrating oil in there in the hope that that would penetrate overnight, which I hope it's done, um, and allow me to undo these nuts and bolts and things. So I'll start with the tailstock. It's kind of a freestanding thing all of its own. Mm, it locked down very tight, but now it slides so you can have... I have to clean that off. You can have any length you like, and it lines up very, very well with this. I'm pleased with that. Let's just do this up, and we'll find out. Hmm, this bed is quite rusted. Uh, the rest, of the, all this up here is made out of aluminium, but this down here, the bed, is quite rusted. It's pressed steel. Um, Although I would like to preserve the original colour, because it's kind of a unique colour that I don't make anymore. There's obviously no chance I can preserve it on here. This might clean up alright, but this is going to have to be uh, done with a uh, rust remover or something like that. A bit of soft wire brushing as well, I think. And uh, a new coat of paint. So I'll move that right to the back there. The actual length of the whole bed is about three foot. I'm just doing this up again so it doesn't rattle. There we are. If I stand the ruler up there and quickly pan the camera, you will see. Yeah, and there is the three foot mark just there, absolutely bang on. So it's imperial, good old British feet and inches, three feet long. Uh, the actual distance between the centres, the most you can get really, is about two, two foot, I think. That's pretty good for a small machine like this. What we got there? Well, that's... Yeah, I think you could actually adjust that back to get uh, 24 inches between it, but that is pushing it. Um, it is very small, and uh, it doesn't actually weigh much at all. It's just pressed steel, and there's a channel here between the bars, which I'll show you in a minute. But really not much weight to it. And that's a very powerful drill. It's like the drill is actually more powerful than my record number one lathe. And a very old drill as well. I'm kind of surprised that this drill is even still working. Let's just zoom in on it a bit there and have a look. You can see it's quite an age. And it's got this all metal front end gearbox here. This lifts up for changing gear or something. I don't know. I can't quite remember what it is. I think we have a, something mounted in the trigger these days for that. So uh, an interesting thing, and that's going to be part of this project on its own. Time to start a few things now. I think now it's spring. I think. So let's just come down a bit now and have a look at this. This is the tool rest banjo. Um, called a banjo because in a full size lathe, the hole in it is a lot bigger than the one in this. Oh yeah, the WD-40 has penetrated a treat. It slides in and out. Let's see if I can get the camera just a bit better positioned for that. It's all my spider's webs there. 
So yeah, we call this the tool rest banjo because it's kind of, you know, if this was a lot bigger, which it usually is, uh, it actually looks a bit like a banjo. And this is where we mount the tool rest. Now this didn't actually come with its original tool rest, but it did come with this rusty old thing, <laughs> which I'm going to put in it. Um, and it does actually do up. I'm not going to attempt to turn with this. I'm just showing you the, the possibilities of this line. So in theory... To tighten this down and this could be your tool rest if you could actually get your hands on the thing there we go and tighten that right down and then do this up and it was in theory let's show you again um, in theory you can run a turning tool around there if we come back a bit it might make more sense there. So you've got the work piece mounted on here, the piece of wood, and it's coming along in a straight line towards the back, and you put the tool rest up against it to get your tool in. This is really floppy and hopeless, I'm going to have to come up with something else, but there we go, that, that shows you how it works. Focusing in on the drill cradle that holds the drill in, it's more or less the same system as this, there's just a bolt that goes all the way through. Uh, in fact, let me take this off and we can have a look. Okay, this is a tailstock. Doesn't weigh much at all. Simply comes off in my hand. <laughs> and you can see it's got a bolt coming through it from underneath. And this large nut underneath on the end of the bolt, it's a really large nut, locks into a channel in the bed. And there's something, I should think it'll be exactly the same, I just haven't looked at it yet, but there's something remarkably similar under here, so let's just see if I can uh, get in there. Yep, takes the same spanner and everything, so let's see. Oh, there we go. The penetrating oil has worked wonders again, I'm delighted with that. Is that actually, it's not actually free yet. I think it might have seized on because the, uh, the nut is nice and free. Oh, there we go, some movement there. And it does move. Because it is useful with the lathe to be able to slide the motor unit along. You see on the record lathe sometimes, that slides quite easily along the bars. So you can kind of position the thing any way you want. It doesn't have to be right at the end. It's kind of anywhere that it would fit on. Right, so this is loose. Not as loose as I'd like it to be. I've got there. That, in fact, is nearly off now. So this, oh, we can come off this way, look. Ah, there we are. Oops. Right, excuse that, it's a bit of a mess, but there we go. See the same very large nut underneath. And if I come in close again, angle the camera down a bit, this is the channel that that nut actually runs in. So let's get oh, certain things out of the way which are now firmly in the way. I'll show you again using the tailstock actually. Because the tailstock, it's nice and handy this tailstock, it comes off in your hand really easy. It's not exactly what you want when you're turning, but it's good for demonstrating it. So here we go again, look, there's underneath the tailstock. This is the large nut which is going to run in the channel. And this is a small nut at the top of the bolt. Uh, sorry, that is the head of the small bolt that attaches into the nut. Just go handheld a minute, because I'd like you to see this channel. How are we doing there? See, just at the end of it there. There's a slot in the channel, it's all pressed steel and the pressed steel is folded over. So let's come back into this thing again. Sorry about this, I hope it's not making anybody feel seasick, but it's going to stay in the, uh, in the tripod from now on. Right. So this nut needs to be guided into there. And the edges of the nut seem to, yep, they sit fairly flat against the edge of the channel. 
And there it is, a bit of messing around with the camera and it's easy to see. You can see the whole T-slot system there. A lot of actually uh, very high quality lathes use a T-slot. It's, it's just cast and machined much more carefully than this one is. And there we are, well, it's surprising how quickly the time goes, isn't it, once we start getting stuck into these things. Thanks very much for joining me. Keep it twig, brother. Don't forget to like and subscribe. A bit more from the shed tomorrow. Okay, thanks again. Have a great one. Bye-bye.